Happy New Year everyone! Good morning, hello, welcome, good to see you again, or if it's your first time, hello, it's nice to see you. Um, starting the New Year with a bit of a disaster, as always. Um, disaster is never far away. We're on day three now of Power Cuts, um, which I thought were completely random and totally unexplainable, but they weren't. We have figured it out. A dishwasher line had burst, which was shorting out a plug that I didn't know existed. Um, but that tank's off at the moment. But basically, how to describe it? The power was going out intermittently, and the consumer unit obviously has all the little switches and fuses for each of the areas of the house. And I could get them all to come back on except for the ring main which controls this floor. So that means this tank had no power, the puffer tank had no power, the pea puffer tank had no power, and the little shrimp tank had no power. So after much messing around, I could get everything bar this floor um, powered, and strangely the kitchen, because that's on the same ring main for some reason. So I started making preparations because the fish room was working at least, so I started moving fish around thinking, right, I can get all these fish out. Um, there's actually there's some discus in there now, but most of them have been moved downstairs. Started moving all the fish downstairs, I got my old um, battery powered air pump to keep some of the tanks going up here. But I was preparing to move all the fish down and then the power came back on. So we switched everything back on again, that was fine. Then the power went out, then it went back on, and it went out. And this continued for some days. And it wasn't until we realised it was every time we switched the dishwasher on, it sprayed some water about 10 minutes into the cycle, shorted out the plug socket, all oh, the power went down. So we finally figured it out, not fixed it yet, but we figured it out. So I know I can get power back up here. But I thought a good opportunity just to have a bit of a run through of what's going on and see how we're up to. So this tank, it's just got its little dither fish, a couple of the smaller discus are in there. I've now moved the puffer fish about eight times in a week, basically, but he's back in this tank here. Uh, the pea puffers, I never got around to moving them in the first place, so they're still there. And as is the little cherry shrimp tank with all the snails and all the cherry shrimps. So we'll go and have a look inside the garage fish room. So the lights have just come on in here, it's a bit louder in here because I think switching my central air pump on and off several times has knackered it, so that needs to be replaced. Um, but over this side it's just snails and plants and things like that, they're all fine. Um, these tanks were emptied out to make more space. I've got the salt water or reef tank, everything's happy in there. I've got the plecos down below. Um, more guppies and things like that and plants, more guppies and plants. And then over here, now I have all the, well this is just some of them actually, this is the, the discus, they were all in here at one point. Um, we talked previously, oh goodbye eye, this is my cat, I'm allergic to my cat. Um, and it touched me about three days ago and now I can't stop crying. Um, but we talked a while ago about moving the Martin Ung discus into the display tank upstairs, so we did a bit of quarantining. Um, so I knew they were okay, so there's just, what is it, five, six, seven of them in there at the moment, and they're quite happy. Uh, I'm just in the process of moving them back upstairs, really. So that's where we got to, but let's get out of this place, because it's dead noisy in here with that knackered pump. So I'm thinking of changing to a linear air pump because I've heard that they're a lot quieter and a lot more user friendly if you like. Um, so that might be a future video of me swapping over to that. So between power cuts and trying to move fish around and dangling extension cords daisy chain to each other from floors that did have power, we managed not to lose any fish so that's a bit of a bonus. Um, I wasn't totally worried about losing the fish anyway, I just didn't fancy moving them all around because I was going to just put them in the garage because I knew I had power there. Ultimately, we sorted out the power problems, um, but there was three days where the power was on and off and a few times when I wasn't in the house and the power went out so the fish had no filtration, no heat for a couple of hours. That's when your test kits come in handy because you can go around and make sure that that's not done any damage yet, there's no ammonia, there's no nitrate in the water, that sort of thing. These things, your battery powered air pumps, 
invaluable if you are around because you can just drop them into your tanks and that will keep the water moving at least and get some oxygen into the water. Um, I've talked in videos before that if this is a long term thing for you, instead of a little ball air stone like this, if you get a big long one and take the media out of your filter and put it on top of it, that will actually keep the water moving through your media and keep it uh, cycled because I think, I don't know, I have no stats to back it up, but I think the number one killer is when people have a power outage and the power's off for a while, the filter isn't having water through it, so it's not replenishing the bacteria with food in there, so it all dies away. The power comes back on, pumps that death into your tank and kills all your fish. So, we didn't have any of that, so I'm thankful for that. But it did take up the best part of a week now, trying to either fix my kitchen, my dishwasher, moving fish and tanks around. So we're in a bit of disarray, there's a bit of algae on some of the tanks that I've not been managing to keep up with. But calm now, we're there. It's all done at last. So, as you can imagine, that has put me a little bit behind with all the projects I had planned. So we'll get on with one of them now. Talked to you before about my CO2 kit that you've seen on my planted tank. It's the JBL Plo... It's the JBL Pro Flora, U500 I think this is. This is the one, it's the disposable bottle. It's been working fine, I think I've got best part of four months out of it, but it's now it's empty. So, looking online, a refill for this is between 20 and 30 pounds, um, usually about 25, maybe another fiver for delivery. And that's for, this is a 500 milliliter, I think it's 500 grams of CO2 in there. Having a look around on some of the forums and things like that, and plenty of tanks and what are people doing. The best solution I could come up with was this. This is from Machine Mart, it's Clark. It's welding gas, but it is pure CO2. So this one was 11 99 excluding that, so £14-ish altogether. And that's 600 grams, so it's a bigger bottle. It's actually the same size, it's just more compressed. Um, although I did check that, it's the same PSI, same pressure. So it's 600 grams, so you get a little bit more, so I should get a little bit more out of this. Um, it's the same fittings on top, so all you have to check is this. If you have some of the other JBL ones, there are ones that come for bigger tanks with different um, fitments and attachments, but this is the one that I need for mine. So if you have the JBL Pro Flora 5, U500, this might save you a couple of quid. So if I got four months out of the old one, I should expect to get five, six maybe out of this one. Uh, especially if I fit it with a solenoid valve. So you, one of the main problems I had with the, the Pro Flora U500 is that this is effectively what it comes with. Now if you buy the kit, you get all lots of nice extras like um, you get some test kits, you get some um, aquarium fertilizer and things like this but essentially for hardware this is it you get your gas you get your regulator you get a bubble counter and you get a diffuser the regulator has to be operated by hand so you literally have to come in every time the lights come on turn the tap let the gas out set it to the right level and then before the lights go out or just after the lights go out turn it off again this needs an upgrade so I have ordered a regulator with a solenoid valve and I haven't got it yet here so we'll just be changing this over at the moment but if you can imagine it's this, it's effectively just this but you can plug it in set a timer so as it will let you set this for the right amount of bubbles that you want coming through so this is all operating perfectly and then when the timer kicks on clicks a valve which effectively stops the gas coming out until it resets again and then lets it out again so rather than having to go down and do this by hand and forget, which is what I will always do, it will do it for me automatically. So just like your lights are on a timer, you can have your CO2 on a timer. But like I say, I've not quite got, that's not been delivered yet. So we're just going to swap this over and get this set up. I'm going to pull up it on this tank, um, just so as you can see it running. Um, but eventually we'll move it downstairs. So the first thing to do is make sure it's empty. The way to do that is opening the valve fully nothing's happening and it's literally just unscrew. If I had forgotten to check that this would now just pretty much get to the top and go everywhere. No it wouldn't really. It's got a little safety pin in there so even if I had forgotten to do this this should be safe. And this is the most technical how-to guide you'll ever see on this channel. 
remove black nipple thing, take regulator, screw on top, making sure to have closed regulator. You'll know when it catches, because you'll hear it, or feel it rather, and it'll take up, just like that. That was a bit more extreme than I had planned it to be. So I've probably let out 50 grams of that extra that I got there. I don't know quite why that did that, but we're on. And you can test it all by just turning the nipple, and there's still water in here, so you'll be able to see the bubbles come through. And then it froths up on this end. It spits all the water everywhere, so we don't want that. But that's it, effectively. Done! What was that, all 30 seconds to change that over? It's hardly worth making a video of. Just as well, I flooded the house a couple of times and had a power cut to talk about, I suppose. Right, then we'll put it back on that, well, we'll put it on this tank and see what it looks like. So that shows you in a couple of minutes how easy it is to set up one of these CO2 kits. Um, I probably am going to keep this uh, system running on this type of CO2. I previously have had it with the old uh, CAN system which you've seen me talk about before. If not I'll link it up here somewhere. But essentially you just fill a bell full of the CO2 into the bubbles. Still in there at the back. Just not... I'm either not a great fan or it's not working very well. And again, because it's manual, I'm not doing it regularly enough. But as you'll have seen, this tank is getting some algae issues. So I'm hoping that with regular proper CO2, as well as me manually going in and attacking the hair algae, that we'll get that under control. Um, CO2 on its own, in my experience, which is limited, so I could be wrong. But CO2 on its own, for me in the past, hasn't got rid of algae. It's helped control it because the plants seem to do better and outcompete the algae when you get everything else right. So as you hear some of the guys going on about, it's all about the balance. You get the light and you get the nutrients and you get the CO2 right. Everything else should take care of itself. But you may have to wait for another video as to whether or not I get in there with some hydrogen peroxide or XL or something along those lines and try and treat the algae directly. But for now, I'm just going to go ahead and pick it all out. So I guess that's it for now. I'll just go away and catch up on all the jobs that I've missed for it being the Christmas period and being busy flooding the house and power cuts and all that. So there's lots to be done. Um, this set up here, this is just temporary. It'll all, I'll buy all the proper bits and root it properly. This was just to show you me doing one little job. Um, I won't bore you to death with the scraping of the algae jobs. But as always, if this is your first time here, click that subscribe button and then you won't miss any of the future videos. And I hope it's made some kind of impression on you. Let me know in the comments what you think and we'll catch you next time. Bye bye.